huge weekend ahead in the SSE Artricity League First Division as we reach the relegation promotion playoff semi-final stage and the first game confirmed for three o'clock afternoon is third against fourth, so UCD against Longford Town at the UCD Bowl. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to be joined by the Longford Town goalkeeper, Lee Stacey. But first, a man who will be hoping to score past him on Saturday, it's UCD striker, Yo-Yo Maddy. Yo, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, Jamie. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I should say the league top scorer as well, with 15 goals, although your teammate Colin Whelan is one behind on 14. So you're racing your UCD friend for the golden boot. Yeah, there's some good competition here. Yeah, I don't know. Does the Golden Boot finish after the league matches or does it carry into the playoffs? Like, are you officially the league's top scorer or how does that work if someone wants to score six goals in the playoffs? Like, I don't know. I haven't been told anything, actually, but I'm just assuming that it's the league anyway and then it's kind of clean slate for the playoffs. So hopefully another Golden Boot. So I'm actually talking to the Golden Boot winner now. Well, that's nice. You're probably right, though, because if someone who didn't make the playoffs had scored say, whatever goals it might be, and then you score. It might be unfair because you've got extra games. So anyway, we'll clarify that one. Um, overall, personally, you must be really happy with your own form. Your team are the top scorers in the league. Yourself and Colin between, you have 29 goals, which is a really impressive stat. And I've seen a lot of your games this season. Really exciting, usual UCD passing football and creating lots of chances for you lads up front. Yeah, we, we didn't really start the season off too well, but after lockdown, we kind of, hit a good run of games, had some good results and yeah, we've just been playing really well at the moment and there's some few bad results here and there but we're learning from them and I think our game against Galway showed a lot of maturity from us being 1-0 down at half time and not giving up and you know, bringing it back to 2-1 although we conceded in the last minute but it was still it was still a good performance from us and I think that we're maturing a lot this season. Yeah, all five of the games at the weekend were streamed. I saw the goals from your match but I was at another game so I, I didn't actually see the full game what was it like? And of course, every game had something on it in terms of teams trying to win the league, Drogheda and Bray, and then five of the other teams could have actually made the playoffs, including yourselves and Galway. So I'm sure it was an interesting one to be involved in. Yeah, we knew we knew all the pressure was really on Galway, so um, we kind of we kind of just played our own game. There was no real pressure on us, and um, they went one nil up just before half time. But we went in at half time. We weren't panicking. We knew we were still in the game. And it was just about staying in the game for as long as possible. And we knew we'd get the chances. And thankfully, Evan Weir popped up with two great goals. So, Yeah, if people haven't seen Evan Weir's goals, go and find them there on the UCD social media. I'm sure if you just type his name into to search in Twitter or Instagram, you'll find him too. Cracking goals as well. And if we look at the season overall, like I've loved being able to be at games and being able to do the podcast. So, it's very disappointing that supporters can't have been at them. How have you found the race and, and just being involved in such a short season and a season that literally went to the final day for almost all the teams in the league? Well, um, we knew at the start of the season was more of a, this is a long season. We're going to take each game as it comes and try to win every game. But after lockdown, it was more of a, a sprint mentality. So we knew that every game was important. And at the time, Cabo were top of the league and they were unbeaten. And we just knew that if we went on a run of games that we could catch up with anyone. And uh, it was a bit disappointing not to be in the title race at the end, but we're still happy with our playoff spot at the moment. Yeah, and from your own point of view, having been at the club now for a few years and involved in the Premier Division season last year, which ultimately ended in relegation back to the First Division. Since then, Andy Myler has come in as manager and... <laughs> You know, some of the, the younger players in the group, maybe who, who wouldn't be senior players like yourself, have, have really stepped up this season. And, and then the senior ones like yourself and Jack Keane, Josh Collins, to name just a couple, Evan Ozam as well. There seems to be a real good mix in the squad and, and that's led to some really good performances. Yeah, I'd say um, the most disappointing thing about last year was that if we were to go goal down or, or go up, we still didn't. If we went to goal up, we wouldn't feel like we, we were going to win the game. And then this year, we're, we're trying to be more clinical, putting teams away. And I think the, the mix of experience, like myself and the lads that you named, um, we're helping out the younger lads. We're gelling together now. We know that we're playing for each other. And uh, yeah, we just, don't want to be, we just don't want to be losing games anymore. We're, we're a winning team. And that's the way we're hoping to be in the playoffs. Yeah, it's an interesting one because every player says that they want to play at the top level. And the top level in the country here is the Premier Division. But... If you're towards the bottom and you're losing games most weeks and you've not got much of the ball and the mood in the camp 
is negative because you're losing games. If you flip that to 12 months on and you're getting ready for the playoffs and you're up towards the top of the table and you're competing to to win something and to get back to the Premier, I find that an interesting comparison, particularly for, for younger players. Like, is it better to be in the top league and towards the bottom or in the first league competing in games, in big games and, and going to try to win things? Um, that's, I don't know, it's a bit of a is the best of both worlds, you know, because in the top division you're playing against the best players and you're challenging yourself and you're seeing how you fare up against them. And uh, when we're back in the first division, we know we knew that we were able to put it up to a lot of those teams. And I think we're using that experience to our advantage this year. And um, I think that's why we're we're going out getting some good results and some pretty impressive wins as well. Yeah, the system as well. We did a live stream of the Cabin TD game a couple of weeks ago and. The three at the back has worked very well, but yourself as the striker in the team or one of the strikers in the team, certainly, I really noticed you're I'm not sure if you're being instructed to do it or if you just do it, but you're starting up front and you end up in that number 10 space and the opposition centre-backs are probably not wanting to go in after you and you're picking up really good positions to turn and almost play from deep and then you've got people running beyond you yet you've also been in the box to score 15 times. So I've been really interested to see your own role this season in the team. How would you describe it? Um, I'm definitely definitely playing up front as a striker anyway, but it's just about trying to cause problems, ask questions. Sometimes you can stay up the whole game and things will happen for you. But if, I don't know, sometimes if I'm getting frustrated or not getting the ball, I like to drop deep and, and get on it and see if a, def- if a defender is going to follow me, see if someone else can run in behind. But without revealing too much, I just... I'm just kind of trying to get on the ball as much as I can and cause problems. Yeah, certainly not looking for any magic advice for your opposition, Longford, on, on yeah. Saturday, because I'm sure they'll be watching this. But, I mean, you've played them a couple of times. It's a small league. A lot of the games have been streamed recently, so I'm sure they're fully aware of what to expect and, and vice versa. But that role for you, it just seems to, to be working really well. And, and not too many teams in the league are playing with two strikers, UCDR, and, and you know, you can talk about variations and you dropping in but at different times as well, yourself and Colin Whelan are two strikers together. And you've, as I said, scored lots of goals. How much are you enjoying that partnership? And I'm sure everybody in City is very confident we used to in the team that you can continue to get goals. Yeah, well, actually, it was this is my first season ever playing in a two-up top since I was about under, under 10s or under 11s. It's always been 4 three, 3 going up the whole way and uh, one striker. And it's like... We're kind of sharing the workload and sharing the goals even because we have 29 between us, only one one goal in it between us. But yeah, we're having a really good partnership and we're linking up really well. We're assisting each other. And I think the boys trust us at the back that we'll get the goals. Yeah. Is that a healthy little conversation between the two of you as well? Yeah, not very healthy. But if you're in the box and you're not in the right position to score, you'll happily pass to him and the other way around, which is nice because it's, it's I suppose, the cliche in football is it doesn't really matter who scores once the team scores and you guys have both proved that a lot yeah it's you can even tell like even if he scores or I score we're first to each other in the celebrations it's not there's no like hatred or jealousy between us we're trying to we're trying to do the best for the team and if I think that he's in a better position to score I'll pass to him and I think the same for him so talk to me yo about Longford they had a quite disappointing last night of the season losing to Wexford I think given where they were in the table and where you guys were and the points you had and also the goal difference, it was unlikely that, you know, you were both going to lose out. You both got through. You guys have home advantage. You're obviously a decent team as well. So you played them twice. What do you make of them and the challenge that awaits on Saturday? Uh, we know. We know that they're a really good side and um, they beat us once when we drew nil all with them at home. And um, we know that they'll fight till the end. We know that they'll run around, they'll press us and uh, we're going to give them the respect that they deserve. But at the same time, we're fully confident that we can we can do the business on Saturday and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, the playoffs in recent years have always been over two legs, but this year it's different because of COVID. So it's a once-off and you don't have the luxury of a second leg if it's needed, for example. Does that change the way the game will be, the way you'll approach it? I think... Um, Without without us without it being intentional, I think it'll be quite cagey at the start of the game anyway, and then it'll take a while for it to open up. But it's it's more about staying in the game for as long as we can because we know that it's one leg and there's a lot on the line. And if we can do that, then I think we can we can nick it at the end, maybe even win it comfortably. Who knows? But we know that Longford are a good side and they beat us last time out, and we'll we're remembering that and we know how they play, and uh, we're doing our homework and 
we're lo- really looking forward to the game. Yeah, it's interesting that the mentality has to flip to that one leg win or bust type attitude because in the league games, clearly, you know, if you're losing the game as you guys were or winning the game, you can get back to get a point or you can get back to get a late winner. Whereas in this, it's effectively win or bust. It's win and you're through. It's lose and your season's finished, which is a very, very different mentality you probably have to have. Yeah, I think we have to be a bit more ruthless, even at the back. Um, if chances are coming their way, we have to be quick to clear them. And then if chances come mine and Colm's way, we have, to, we have to try to put them away. And like we know how dangerous Longford are. They have the likes of Rob Manley up front. He's got what, nine goals this season. And uh, he was top scorer last year. So we know that the, tr- the threat that they pose. And they have a lot of experience as well. They played playoffs last year. They were in and around it the year before. So, yeah, we're really, really excited for the game. And, yeah. Talk to me about Andy Moyler and the stamp that he's put on the team. You know, he came in in the off-season. He's a very, very experienced League of Ireland person, both playing and coaching and, and managing. But before he took the job, he he'd had a little break for a couple of years. And I know he did an interview recently on the 42 where he was talking about his reasons for wanting to jump back in and, and stuff. Um, so you might just talk to me about him as the manager, what he's looking from from you guys. And I think looking from the outside, his first season as a manager at UCD has gone quite well. Yeah, Andy's really good with us. Um, we actually had him for a season with our college team, so we kind of like looked on and and he kind we kind of knew who he was already, and we knew like his attacking philosophy and stuff like that. And uh, this year, he's really given us a lot of freedom to play, and um, with the with the style of play that we play, we're we're not really afraid to make mistakes, and we know that we just have to we have to work really hard for each other, and yeah, we're we're really happy with him and. We're enjoying the style of football that we're playing and the freedom that we're given on the pitch. Yeah, that's something as well that's interesting because clearly you don't want to make mistakes because it's particularly for the next couple of weeks. If you continue through the playoffs, mistakes lead to possibly not winning games. But at the same time, if the manager is asking the team to play in a certain way, he has to have some sort of acceptance to at times mistakes happening, particularly playing a passing style. But at the same time, I'm sure he, he's he's anxious for, for the team to make as, as few mistakes in possession as possible. So how is that weighed up internally? Because the reason why you guys are so good is because you play that brand. But at times, like Long, for example, might come to try and press on Saturday because they know the type of passing football that you're going to play. Yeah, well, at the same time, we're not really afraid to mix it either. Um, if we have to go long, we'll go long. But um, I think that a lot of the standards that we set are come from the from the players as well it's a lot of, it's really player led on the pitch at the time because at the end of the day the manager can't come on and control us when we're on the pitch so we have to we have to decide on the day whether we think the right pass is in front of us and if we don't then we we have to change it up and um we're not really trying to i don't think anyone's really happy to be making mistakes but if they happen they happen it's all about making up for them at the end of the day the season overall for you as a League of Ireland player, for all of the people involved in the league, players, coaches, officials, media, it's just been so different. And I feel very lucky to have been able to still be around games and be at games and be doing interviews like this and stuff about the games. How have you found it as a player in, in probably the most strange League of Ireland season that any of us are ever going to be involved in? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely a lot more quiet on the pitch during games anyway, not, not what we're used to. But... Um, I think that kind of added pressure from the crowd, like it kind of eliminates home advantage for a lot of teams. And uh, yeah, it's we're able to hear the manager give out a lot more often anyway. Um, but yeah, it has been a really weird season. And there was a few games where there was fans allowed. There was a bit of a limit and you could really hear the difference in games like that. And you can feel it as well. So we're really looking forward to having fans back next year. And in terms of all the stuff around this, you know, like everybody's just very quickly flipped into that mode of temperature has to be checked, hand sanitizer, masks at different times, the way the subs have to sit apart. But the actual training and the games and all that, that hasn't changed at all, apart from, you know, the manager's been able to make a couple of extra substitutions. So the football side hasn't changed, but it's just the things around it, you've, you've all had to adapt to quite quickly. How have you found all of that? Yeah, I think um, the fact that we're still able to train and play matches is, is really good for us because I don't know what I'd be doing if, if we weren't really playing football. So I'm really happy that that bit of normality stays the same. It's just the only difference is the, the lack of crowds. But thankfully, a lot of a lot of teams are streaming games and even we, we're starting to stream games as well. So I think the people at home are 
I really lucky to be we're happy that they get to watch yeah we'll hopefully have news of a stream 40 UCD Longford game later on today as well myself and Yoyo are chatting on Thursday morning yeah Thursday morning isn't it yeah. yeah, losing track of days here. Lastly, the podcast is called League of Ireland Lives, and I'm also interested just to hear about people's life away from football. Are you still in college? Are you finished college? And what's the plans? Like, what have you been studying? And, and what's the plans eventually when you finish in UCD as a student and where your your life away from football might take you? Yeah, I'm uh, currently finally year in commerce, um, finishing up my degree. And um, yeah, I did um, two years of engineering as well, but I switched course. And that's probably why people feel like I've been at UCD forever. But um, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just trying to get through the final year now. There's a lot of study, a lot of exams, and yeah, the football's a bit of a break from all that. Why did you make the swap from engineering to commerce? I couldn't knock it. Couldn't knock it at all. Too hard. Too hard. So this is your how many years now at UCD? Uh, this is my it's my fifth year in the college, but it's my fourth season with the club. I did one year nineteen and it's my third season with the first team Wow so yeah you're an experienced player now and hopefully you'll continue to bang them in over the next couple of weeks Yo-Yo thanks for jumping on good luck in the game I'll see you at the bowl on Saturday and we'll chat to you soon No bother Jamie thanks for having me on So from a man who'll be hoping to score a few goals at the UCD Bowl on Saturday in Yo-Yo Maddy to a man who'll be hoping to stop him I'm delighted to welcome Longford Town goalkeeper Lee Stacey who's sporting definitely the best beard and barnet combination in the League of Ireland this season I think Hello Leeser how are you? Hello, Jamie. Thanks for that. I'm not so sure there's a few contenders out there. But thanks very much. Yeah, you're looking uh, looking tough, actually. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, like hate the bear. Does it make me look a bit angry? I don't know, but uh, we'll see. That's that's what you're the force to say. So, so we'll see. Well, certainly, if I was a striker playing against you, I'd be I'd be afraid of you. Well, look. Once I keep keep the ponytail out, I might have to put a bit more uh, a bit more wax in the hair to keep it back. I think the ponytail might take away from that a little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Lee, thanks for coming on. We're all very excited about the games this weekend. Hopeful to confirm today a live stream for UCD against Longford on Saturday at three at the Bowl. Um, what a fascinating last weekend as well. You guys ended up losing two one to Wexford, and looking at the the other scores, had Cabin Teeley below you or Galway or Cove picked up points you might have actually ended up outside those playoffs so what's the feelings on, on how the weekend ended in the end but also the outcome could have been a lot worse yeah there's the dog inside there's lot. the dog that's fine <laughs> um, see we're working from yeah. home so the dog's fully that's allowed in the Skype get him on your lap there with the tennis ball as well but um, <laughs> no, look ultimately Jamie we were very disappointed with the result but I don't think there's any point dwelling on it like we're, we're in the playoffs we finished fourth because the league, play, the league table doesn't lie we deserve to finish there Luckily, um, results went that way. So, at the end of the day, you have to take that, you know. So, um, no, we'd be worried if we didn't create chances. I think Tom Murphy had an excellent game. He made some brilliant saves. So, I think um, uh, uh, we wouldn't be too worried about it. And we're happy that we're in the playoffs. So, we get another week to prepare for a huge game now on Saturday. Yeah. How do you reflect on the season overall, Lee? I did a little preview piece before the games on Saturday and I said in it that I thought Longford would be disappointed they weren't involved in the race for the title right to the end but again you're in the playoffs and there's still all to play for so how would you reflect on this season overall of course one series of games lost to Covid as well so an 18 game season Yeah I think um, I read your article there and uh, I have to be honest I'd agree disappointment is, um, is exactly what we were feeling that we weren't challenging looking at Rod and Gray like two good sides but Longford, we should be challenging, and that was that was our aim. We were aiming for a title, so can we go a bit short? And it's only really three games if you look at it. That's ten points, four games. But um, after the first two games, being drawn up there, you, you think it's lovely. We we set down a marker here, but we just we lack consistency all year. And you know, I think if there's a time to go on a run, this is it. Yeah, and you know, it's a big game on Saturday as well against another really good team, and the fact that. The playoffs were kept is something I think is de- a definite reason why the first division has been so good and why it's gone to the last day and why two teams could have won the league and five teams were fighting for those other three playoff spots. But that's the same question to Yo-Yo, just given how different this season has been for everybody involved. How have you found it on and off the pitch with all of the extra protocols and the no fans? And I suppose, thankfully, that we have got to this stage where the seasons at both leagues are, are nearly complete and and even though there has been lots of games called off for different reasons, we're, we're just about ready to finish off. 
Yeah, I think um, we're very lucky that we get to play, you know, um, after the first lockdown and not being able to kick a ball for months was torture, let's be honest. So for our league players to be able to continue, it's, it's, it is a blessing. So we're, we're very, very happy that we can still get to play, but without fans, it's, it's just not the same. Um, and hopefully for the 2021 season, there'll be fans back in full capacity in the grounds because they make it really, you know. It's um, a couple of games that went by, you think, if you had if you had the fans there, things might change, you know, you get scored on. Just little tackles, they only influence the ref, anything can happen, you know. So I think um, for more reasons of one, fans are hugely missed. This is going to sound like a strange question, but the fact that you're a goalkeeper and goalkeepers would be known for their communication and, you know, their view of the pitch, that they can see it all. And you spoke there about maybe trying to influence the ref at different times and whatever. I've actually found it very interesting at the games as a journalist, being able to hear every word of both the players, the managers, even the officials and the linesmen talking in their microphones to the referees and stuff. So is that the one positive that can be taken that whatever you shout to your teammates or to your manager or a conversation you have with the referee, that it can be crystal clear and, and there's no confusion in that information? Yeah, well, sometimes we've been uh, criticised from, from management or whatever, of saying we can't hear you talking or whatever, but a lot of the time I'm not shouting, I'm actually just speaking to the defenders around me and I'm mm-hmm. getting them to organise. So I haven't heard that that comment in a while since um, since people are actually able to hear um, exactly what you said, they can hear everything. So no, it's, um, look, it, it makes no odds. I, it's, it's, I haven't changed the way I speak anyway, but yeah, you can definitely, the information is, is related to like, probably is a little bit easier. I think when there's so much noise in the background, you kind of, you kind of blank a lot out. So with less noise in the background, you, you may be concentrating a little bit more. Maybe you, you take the information a little bit easier. Yeah, it's a real shame though, particularly like I love the playoffs. I love the first division, but I love the playoffs so much. And I've been at so many of the playoff games in, in recent years from even back in, you know, 2015, 16, those Limerick Finn Harps games and packed stadiums, you know, same last year in, in, First Division previous year as well, whether it be any of the teams involved, you know, it's just a brilliant thing to be involved in, I'm sure, for you guys too. So it's just going to be so different on Saturday in what is the biggest game of the season for both yourselves and UCD, where there's going to be, bar a sprinkling of officials and media, nobody else there. Yeah, of course. Um, well, the last two seasons I've played in packed stadiums in um, playoffs, I've been involved in squads. And um, yeah, it's it's such a it's a great night, like it's such a huge game. Obviously, you have two legs normally, and this year it's only one, so that's a little bit different as well. But I think there'll still be an atmosphere. I think there'll be a couple of fans hiding around the ground trying to trying to get a view. But obviously, I seen the stream UCD had a couple of weeks ago. With, I think they were promoting. It looked really good. So we're lucky that the League of Ireland has that has that now, and I think long may it continue. So. Um, yeah, in terms of the game, it will still be huge pressure on the game, but at the end of the day, it is only a game of football, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I've actually missed a call here about the uh, final negotiations to confirm this stream for Saturday, so we'll hopefully have news. We will have news later on today about that, and uh, looking forward to it with the guys from Doppler Media as well. Um, you spoke about the playoff being one leg this year. That's very different. It's win or bust, really. It is win or bust. Does that change approach? Does that change in-game, given that you don't have the second leg in what was City Calling Stadium, now Bishop's Gate at home and, you know, it would normally be, say, for example, Saturday shoots or whatever and you don't have that opportunity now, it's just one leg and happens to be away from home? Yeah, well, I suppose, like, um, it is different, obviously, so it's, you can't kind of just get through one leg. I don't know what way you would approach it. Would you just try and get through it if we had two games? But it's it's going to be going home, Jamie, you know, just two teams here, here who are very good and with attack and play so especially UCD they've scored a lot of goals and I think it's going to be a very very um, intense game and with, with there only being one game it's, it's like it's going to be crazy put it that way Yeah you spoke about UCD's attack and threat they're the top scorers in the league and I spoke to Yoyo Maddy a couple of minutes ago between himself and Colin Whelan between the 29 goals this season 15 for Yoyo and 14 for Colin so, as a goalkeeper, I'm sure you'll be very focused on on making sure that you guys try and keep them quiet because they're two very, very dangerous attackers, not to mention Liam Kerrigan and, and others in the team as well. 
I know they are an excellent side. Like I played against UCD in the league and in college football, and I've been on the end of a couple of defeats in college, and it's just you can see how good they are, you know. But in the league, thankfully we've limited them really this year. Um, especially when you're looking at Yo Yo on the farm, you know, and obviously Colin Whelan scored a lot of goals too. So personally, I think the defending starts from the front and how we set up to play. I think we play with intensity, play up the pitch. It obviously makes the defenders' jobs easier and harder to get the ball to Yo Yo and Colin Whelan, who are the danger men. Yeah, and it's like. I'm sure something that you're aware of, but you've also played UCD twice this season, a draw and a win for, for you guys too. And Do you take much from those games? Do you look back on them? Will they form part of the preparation, You know, given it's been such a, such a short season as well and you've played them quite recently, certainly in the in the second round of fixtures? Yeah, well, we look at the bo- both of the games and we look at what we did well and, and how we started games or how we finished or whatever happened in them. And we try and replicate... Well, what worked well, basically, but I don't think we can take too much from it because ourselves, we haven't been consistent enough. So that day, we could have been good. Um, so really, it's it's this is a new game. Um, it doesn't matter what's gone on before because the playoffs is a whole different uh, kettle of fish. Yeah, it's certainly something that everyone, I'm sure, is very excited about. You're an experienced player at the club, Lee. You've worn the captain's armband at different times this year as well. You're not full-time permanent captain, are you? Or am I doing you a disservice? No, Dan Zamper is captain. Yeah, I'm only yeah. be voice captain. I'm fully in for. Yeah, okay. Um, so Saturday morning, games, we think at three o'clock. How will you be feeling? And what's your what's your game day routine? I can't wait, Jamie. That's the truth. Um, I really can't. Like, playoffs is... It's an, it's an unbelievable game to play in. Like, it's just... It's, there's a lot at stake, you know, for the club, for fans, for players, for everything. So... I'm just looking forward to it. I really am. Um, match day routine is obviously going to be different than than what it would normally be, but I'd recommend. Well, I don't want to give out any tricks or secrets away, but just wake up at normal time and uh, make sure you eat in the same time frame you would before your game. That's one thing I found difficult for ages, just getting the right time to eat, but I think I have it down now, so I'll be just integrating that at a different time. And then, yeah, I'll probably just go on a walk or whatever. And you don't want to think about the game too much, obviously. We're preparing right for it now, but I think if you, if you overthink things, it can go against you as well. So just take it easy and look forward to the game. Well, that dog there in the tennis ball will certainly keep you busy on Saturday morning. Yeah, it's a dog. Uh, uh, just two of them, and we just bring the rugby, rugby ball out for them, and they can't, the two of them can't beat us, so they're chasing after for ages. It's great. Uh, boy, I end up running after them, so I won't be able to do that. What's their names? Uh, they're the girlfriend's dog, so Scamp and Bonnie. Scamp and Bonnie, very nice. Yeah. So well, the, two the, yeah. Dogs. yeah, well, the dogs never know what's going on in your life. If you've won a football match, lost a football match, lost your job, broken up with your missus, whatever, they don't know. And that's why I love them. And I'm sure on Saturday morning they'll be giving you just a little, come on, throw me ball and maybe help you relax a little bit because every footballer has a different way to relax pre-match. Some have a nap, some walk their dog, some obviously have kids, others might watch Netflix, listen to music, read a book, whatever gets you to where you need to be in kind of pre-match mode, I'm sure helps. Yeah, well, look, um, I think walking with the dogs is actually it's a great form of exercise. Like, it's not too strenuous and it is, I just think, out in the open air, especially with the, the views around here in Klonski is where the missus lives. It's, um, it's nice and scenic. I just think it's very therapeutic and, uh, it's definitely, it won't do me any harm if, if we get out on a game day to get out on a walk. The main thing is, it's on a Saturday, there's no work to worry about, you can chill out, so I'm looking forward to that, you know. So any UCD fans or players now know that Lee Stacey is behind enemy lines in Klonski, leading up to the match with the dogs, so if you see him out in the local park now, you might get you might get a bit of abuse to uh, wind, you, wind you up before the game. Uh, this is it, I'm literally, you wouldn't believe how close it is to the ball, so I'm be down a bit of Marco Bielsa, so might be down a bit of spying now before the weekend is out. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Lee Lassie, you mentioned work there and, and the podcast is called League of Ireland Live. So um, you've been on with me a little bit over the last couple of years across your, your career as a footballer and, and also work and college. And I know you were you were doing a taxi for a while, but that's difficult in the current environment and you're still studying. So what is your League of Ireland Life at the moment away from being a Longford Town footballer? Yeah, Jamie, unfortunately you had to 
park the taxi aside. Um, it's just the current climate. It's just there's no business in it. It's really good business industry to be in when it, when we're in normal circumstances because you could be your own boss. But luckily enough, I um, I got a job in on post, so um, I'm on a split shift at the moment, so I'm able to do my studies as well. Um, I am very busy though. I will say that like it's it's really it's a big workload between football, work and college. But thankfully, a lot of it is online. Um, and then the workload itself isn't too heavy, so I'm very happy that I'm able to do to do everything I can. You know, there's only a year and a half left in college, so I, I'll take the year, the busy year and a half while I can. You know, God, I'll be talking to John Ross Wilson from Bray later on to preview the second semi final, and he's also a postman. So two out of three, two out of four, half my guests this well, week are postmen. Well, I don't know about John Ross being a postman because I actually collect from the post boxes beside his house and every time I drive by, there's a postman in the garden. I, I've never seen him do a bit of work, so I don't know what he, he could be doing. I, think I send him pictures every day. I says, will you move that man? He won't move. I don't know what he's doing. He goes on foot or on a bike or something, probably. <laughs> no, he has he has a van, but I tell you what, he doesn't, he doesn't use it. Hopefully the boss isn't listening here now. Uh, ho- hopefully I get him in trouble he's missing the weekend because he's a great player well I tell you what hopefully it's a Bray against Longford final and we can put you both on the podcast to have a, a verbal row about who's the better postman uh, post off <laughs> Lee Stacey thanks a million for coming on you're nice and relaxed and ready to go I'm sure so good luck on Saturday I'll see you at the bowl and I'll chat to you then perfect Jamie thanks a million see you then